Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about model rockets and specifically the components that go into a typical model rocket. I want to thank Tom Saradet for putting together these uh, presentations, this slide deck. He put together some uh, lessons for his classes and I found his presentations and thought them to be very good. So thank you Tom if you happen to be watching this video. Well, a model rocket consists of a couple of different sections, and we're going to talk about uh, two main sections, the booster section and the payload section, and all the things that go inside there. First, let's talk about the booster section. That's the lower part, uh, and you can see the fins there. The airframe is really just the tube, and let's talk a little bit about all these components. So you see, for example, uh, the, the launch lug at the top. Uh, and we're going to use, you can use either a uh, a launch lug if you have a, a rod. We're going to actually be using, using a rail, so we're going to use rail guides instead. So that's one little difference. Uh, you see a parachute packed in here, that's the red. Uh, it's wrapped uh, inside the shock cord, which is attached to the airframe, it's attached to the tube. And then you also see uh, engine mount. Now the engine mount is just a tube that's put in between two centering rings. So there's a top one and a bottom one here. And those are essentially discs with a hole in the middle. Think of it like a smashed donut. And those allow us to put the engine in and align it properly so that we get the thrust going in the right direction. And then finally, uh, it's not really shown here really well, but there's an engine retainer, which typically will run through here and have a little bit of a hook there. And what that does is it keeps the engine in place because when it gets done burning, when it gets to the top, there's an ejection charge that shoots up here. It pushes the parachute out and separates everything. So let's talk a little bit about the fins. Um, just a couple of things that I think you should know here. So the leading edge, that's the front of the of the fin, and here you see a particular kind of fin. We'll talk about the different kinds of fins coming up. Uh, here's the center of uh, gravity uh, in this case. Uh, it has a tip up here and a root. The root is what attaches to the tube. And on the side view here, you're going to see... Uh, at the the root is a little bit thicker than the tip. So let's take a look at what some of the shapes are. Um, and we're going to start on the left and we'll go all the way down. So we're rectangular. We don't want to use rectangular. It's really easy to make, but it's not very aerodynamic at all. You can make it a little bit more aerodynamic by sweeping it. So you'd sweep the leading edge and you'd sweep the trailing edge uh, to make it even a little bit more aerodynamic. Um, we can uh, taper it even farther. One thing that we might use is a, a clip called a clipped delta. So here you see it doesn't have the swept uh, rear edge or trailing edge like the tapered swept does. Trapezoidal fin is really good for aerodynamics, but the best aerodynamic fin turns out is the elliptical design, and you might remember that from our virtual lab. Well, here's a little bit more detail, and I don't expect you to know all of these things, but if you were to take an aerospace engineering class, you'd have to know all of these things. The C here stands for the cord, and that's really just a, a distance. Here's just an example of a low drag, high performance rocket, and what some of the uh, what some of the dimensions might look like, so that you can get a feel for. Uh, here's a seven inch, seven and a half inch length total rocket, and the fins themselves are about an inch. Now let's take a look at the payload section and what goes in there. Well, we've talked about nose cones. Airframe is just really uh, a tube and for our purposes it's going to be a cardboard tube so at the top we have the nose cone or the nose section uh, the airframe again is just a tube the bulkhead here 
uh, is a solid disc and what that does is it it protects uh, the egg. The egg will probably in our case have a special holder that's made of foam and it has a, a place where you can safely put an egg. We will have an altimeter that we're going to have to to make sure that we place properly. We want to be able to insert that and remove it easily before and after we launch. And then finally we have a tube coupler. What that does is it's a way to connect the the payload section with the bottom section. And then a shock cord attachment at the bottom as well that holds everything together. Well, we all know what an egg is, but the important thing to know here is that uh, at this bottom bullet that talks about uh, the force required to break an egg. So if you uh, put an egg on its end, like is shown here, it takes about 35 newtons as opposed to putting it on its side. So that's kind of how we would like to put our eggs. Uh, at least that's the optimal way. We don't have to do that, but just something to know. Um, no shapes. I just want to expose you to these. Um, for our purposes, we're going, we're not going at a really, uh, high speed. So it's most important to really just have a smooth finish. Uh, you're probably going to want to go with either an elliptical or a parabolic design. And, uh, I can help you pick some of those parts as well. Let's talk a little bit about rocket motors. Um, some people call them rocket engines. Motors and engines are really different things, and it doesn't really matter what you call them, just as long as you kind of know what they are. So typically, motors are measured in millimeters, and you can see uh, on this slide how it has three different sizes. So uh, we'll talk about a little bit about what this code means here. So you see an A103T, for example. We'll break that down in a little bit, uh, but for our purposes and our designs, typically we're going to use either a 24 or a 29 millimeter. Um, and that's important to know uh, because we want to have the right size tube and uh, right size components to make sure that we get that engine fit properly in our rocket. Here's what we talked about the difference between an engine and a motor. Um, I don't really care if you know that or not. So let's talk a little bit about, there's a couple of different kinds of motors. Uh, there's a black powder motor. You would normally see this with smaller rockets, but the important thing I want you to know here is the code, because you'll want to know that. Um, here it shows uh, at the top a C6-5 or a C6-5. So the letter uh, talks about the, it's basically the amount of thrust. Um, and in, when we talk about rockets, we actually talk about impulse. Impulse is actually thrust times time. Okay, so the, the, the farther you go in the alphabet, the more power or thrust you have. So for example, a B is going to have more thrust, or technically, to be correct, more impulse than an A engine. A C is going to have more impulse than a B and so on. We're probably going to use E or Fs for our purposes in TARC. The first number after that gives the average thrust in Newtons. Uh, and then the last part, the 4 here, indicates the delay in seconds uh, between when it's done burning, it's done thrusting, it's actually going to coast up a little bit, it's going to reach a peak, and then it's going to start coming down. So the delay in seconds is after it stops burning thrust, it's going to coast. And in this case, it's going to wait four seconds before the ejection charge uh, ejects the parachute and separates the rocket. And the way we, uh, these engines work, uh, the black powder, is uh, here at the, the top is where you have the ejection charge and down here is where you would put you need to have an igniter uh, that's really about all you need to know uh, well let's look at the next kind of rocket motor 
a composable reload, uh, reloadable motor. Um, you can buy these pre-built. You can build these. Uh, we will not build these. We will buy these pre-built. Um, and here you can see uh, this yellow line down the middle. That is the igniter, and we'll hook some uh, hook that up to a battery. Uh, it runs a little charge through here. That starts the ignition. And at the top, so this is the bottom of the rocket down here, where the nozzle is. And it's just like the big rockets you see on the space shuttle and the SpaceX rockets. They all have this type of design. At the top is the uh, there's a delay element, and then the ejection charge. Over here is what this comes off, and it blows the, the parachute out, and it separates the rocket. And here's what they look like. Uh, that's what a typical one looks like. Parachutes are very important components, uh, specifically when we're talking about, we're trying to hit our time element. Uh, parachutes can be made of a lot of different things. Uh, plastic is pretty typical. Those are low cost. Mylar is a very lightweight and strong material. Um, we also have shroud lines. Uh, those are the lines that you see here that hold the parachute uh, together with the uh, there's a, a little ring here that holds everything together. Uh, this is this what's going to connect us to the shock cord. Um, one important thing is you want to have you want to make sure that your your parachute is big enough to slow you down. You want to probably oversize your parachute a little bit, uh, and then you can create a spill hole at the top, which will help you regulate how fast it comes down. Uh, streamers, I just want to expose you to streamers. Uh, we're probably not going to use streamers. You might use one uh, in certain kinds of designs, but basically think of a kite tail. That's essentially what it is. It's just a strip of, could be paper, could be plastic, uh, mylar, whatever. It uh, doesn't come down as fast as if you use a streamer. It doesn't come down um, it does come down, I should say, faster than uh, something with a parachute. And that concludes our presentation on the components of a rocket.